Hello YouTube, this is Omega back with another video and um, I just wanted to do this video. Uh, often we ask the question, what is actually going on in the world today? What is going on in the West? And it's really, really confusing for a lot of people. You know, it seems like we've just got this army of sheep uh, just being led along, not really understanding what's going on, uh, not questioning what's going on. We know something is inherently wrong. We know there is something up and we're just trying to put our finger on it. Why, uh, why are we seeing what we're seeing and which movements are behind it and what is manipulating it? Um, I just wanted to have a look at a, a, a few different um, philosophies or political philosophies which may shed a little bit of light uh, on, um, on some of these issues. And this is only a, a fairly vague uh, sort of exploration of these sort of political ideologies. Um, but, you know, we've got stuff like pro progressivism, um, modern progressivism, uh, socialism, and uh, progressive socialism. And these are sort of words that get, are getting thrown around a lot, but do we actually know where they, what they are, and wh where they come from, and what they mean, especially what they mean for us in the modern era? So, uh, now, when we hear the word progressivism, most of us cringe, I know I do, uh, but that's because progressivism has been uh, sort of linked to progressive socialism, which is a whole different um, kettle of fish. Progressivism itself, in its purest form, was actually a fairly good thing. Um, if you, you uh, go back in history and you study your history of early Europe, um, there was actually a time uh, which was called the Age of Enlightenment. And during this era, uh, we were growing in knowledge, we were growing in understanding, and we were basically becoming a more civil sort of society. People, uh, you know, were questioning, um, you know, the barbarous practices of the day, uh, things that were having uh, happening in prisons, the way people were treated. You know, human life basically was very, very cheap. And progressivism was a movement that sort of improved, uh, if, if I had to put a finger on it, I would say it improved the value of human life market, marketably. Uh, so that, that's progressivism. That's a very, very light um, evaluation of it. But you get the idea. We've sort of gone from a barbarous sort of society to a more civil society where there's a, where there's a higher value on human life. Now, um, so that had a big uh, push through the Age of Enlightenment. Life got better and things were cruising along nicely. Now, in the probably the late 19th century, um, it sort of had a bit of a rebirth again. Uh, if you look at the late 19th century, uh, we had the uh, industrialization um, of many societies. Now, what happened uh, was we had the industrialization of the West and what happened was you had all this resource, you had all this, um, uh, mon there was all this money to be made and there was a minimal amount of regulation, like it was not being regulated properly. And so, uh, and I, I would say a lot of corruption as well. Um, so at around this time, you had a boom in uh, sort of capitalist corporations. So these capitalist corporations really, really boomed. They became very, very powerful. They became a law unto themselves. Um, and in that sort of in low uh, sort of regulated environment, you can imagine what it was like as far as becoming a law unto themselves. Like, you know, in the good old days, you could get away with this and get away with that. Well, these guys were raking in money um, for their corporations and their groups. And the divide between uh, them and the working class was starting to grow larger and larger and larger. And this sort of around that time led to uh, uh, violent clashes um, and, uh, you know, an, a, a upheaval. And uh, this is where we sort of 
break into the socialist sort of uh, ideology here. Um, that's what that, I mean. That, that's when there was a real resurgence of um, progressive thought. Um, now, the idea of the socialists. Uh, now, I want to highlight this. Always end, ends badly. If socialism was great, um, it would be everywhere. But it's just not great, and I'll tell you why. Um, but uh, socialism puts the power. Um, of uh, basically, uh, it puts the power into the hands of the working class, and the mechanisms uh, to achieve that in socialism are generally uh, an overpowering of capitalism. Now that's done through extreme uprisings. That's done through violent revolutions. Um, that's where uh, people come in and they get rid of the evil capitalists, and they take over everything. And uh, it becomes a people-owned government, a people-run government, um, and then uh, you've got this people-run government, and they start making the rules, and they equally distribute out to all the people. Um, uh, you know, basically, uh, you know how uh, the, a socialist government works. They, they, uh, it's it's very equal for all the people, and in its in its idyllic form. It's sort of a government run by the people, for the people, it's all about the people. But what always happens in, uh, these, in this sort of, uh, in this sort of um, nirvana of equality is a dictator rises up out of that. You're always going to have a leader. Um, and I guess the problem with socialism is if everyone's locked into the sort of this equal sort of standing, um, there's going to be a group or an elite group or, or an elite dictator that is above all of that. And because these people are all down here and he's up there, it's, it's almost impossible for them to ever to, to overthrow him. And that's why we see, you know, these um, in these socialist societies, we see these dictators riding up, uh, uh, rising up, sorry, um, and you end up with a dictatorship. Uh, now, Hitler was a socialist and he was using the whole idea of um, the working class taking over. As you know, he had the Workers' Party, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and uh, he, uh, what, but what he did, um, you know, and, and eventually he took totalitarian leadership of the country, was he, he used a different kind of socialism, which is progressive socialism. Now, progressive socialism is the blight uh, that we are seeing today. So Hitler, what did Hitler do? Hitler stood up for the working class. Um, he was more a socialist than a progressive socialist, but had elements of progressive socialism. So he stood up for the working class. Um, often there was violence involved. Um, but what he did was is he... Uh, he created an ideology, a philosophy, a political philosophy, um, which led, uh, you know, and, and you, the way he, uh, he was a very, very smart politician, but a, a very, an extremely poor war tactician. If he was a great war tactician, most of us would be speaking German right now, but he wasn't. He was very, very bad, and he was a morphine addict as well, but um, he had elements of both progressive socialism and socialism. Now, the difference is this. Um, progressive socialism is a political philosophy and it manipulates society through social change to avoid the need uh, for violence. Now, obviously, Hitler used violence when he started taking power and when he instituted a totalitarian regime which unfortunately is the outcome of progressive socialism, and I'll tell you why. Um, so it manipulates society through social change, um, uh, and while socialism and progressive socialism both uh, try to get economic equality happening, the difference is, is that progressive um, uh, socialism actually likes to cling to um, to capitalism. They click, 
they, they, they don't want to get rid of capitalism. They know that it's a useful tool to, um, to, uh, to bring about change. And they don't really want to put the workers and the average Joe in, in control. They still have this elitist mentality. And what they do is with this political philosophy is they gradually change the social landscape through in, incremental change. Um, and like I said, they still cling to capitalism and, um, and they won't allow the average Joe to be running things. And, and one of the reasons I believe that progressive socialists um, shy away from that is because most working class people disagree with progressive socialism. Most working class people um, actually understand that pure capitalism is the way to go. You go to work, you work hard, you earn money. If you want to buy something nice, you, you do. You don't want to be paying too much tax and this and this and this. So there's a strong capitalist backbone to the working class. Um, this is why it conflicts with um, progressive socialism. But uh, now, because the progressives won't use violence, they have to manipulate social change. So instead of a violent takeover of a government or <coughs> doing something violent to get into power, this is what they do. And this is what we're witnessing in the world right now. Um, we're witnessing the progressives um, manipulating social change. And the way they do this is they come to the common man, they come to the working class, but especially the minority groups, the poor, the, left, the less privileged, and they basically convince them to be disenfranchised. So they look for a disenfranchised group, could be the LGBTI group. Um, it could be uh, what we're seeing in America with Black Lives Matter. Um, this is very appealing uh, to these groups because they, they create a narrative. They create this narrative of how disenfranchised they are, how hard done by they are. And we obviously see this with the, the feminist movement. And, um, and what they do is they convince them that they're downtrodden. They create a narrative. And basically, they um, convince them to be jealous um, or hateful towards the establish establishment. Um, or, you know, for, for you know, a particular race of people that may be just doing better. Um, and we see, we see elements of that progressive socialism playing out in Nazi Germany because who was doing better? What, did, what, did, what was the mechanism, one of the mechanisms Hitler used? Hatred towards the Jews. Why? Because Jews tend to do well uh, in any society. That's because they stick to a, a certain religious code of conduct, which actually leads to prosperity automatically. It's because they stick to a biblical code of conduct, which brings them prosperity. Now, um, so what, and the reason, this is why the left do this, the progressive left. They create this disenfranchised um, attitude. Um, and, and we see this um, it ha playing out in America right now. Um, disenfranchised Latinos, disenfranchised African Americans, dis disenfranchised um, LGBTI, disenfranchised Muslims. And then they get all these groups together and they get these groups to all vote for a progressive leader, you see. So this is how they, they change society without a violent takeover, without a violent takeover of the establishment. They uh, bring in um, change by creating manipulations in society, manipulating the people. And what comes along with that is all this political correctness. What comes along with that are all these lies. What comes along with that is a dividing of societies, all this poison and hatred, because this is what fuels the progressive left. Hatred and division are what fuels the progressive left. And then what they do is those people vote in um, uh, progressive leaders who then um, placate to uh, these uh, minority groups, and then they start putting things into law, which uh, uh, will inherently favour all of these minority groups, protections for LGBTI. Now we see gay marriage in America, um, and it's only for a small minority, but it affects the whole majority. It takes away religious freedoms, it has all sorts of roll-on effects. Um, kids in schools are now taught progressive socialist ideology, 
and that's done through the platform of the LGBTI. You think uh, they're, t they're talking about being fair to the LGBTI, they're trying to stop hatred towards the LGBTI, but what they're really doing is they're instilling progressive socialist values into children, so when those children grow up, those children will vote for progressive socialists, you see. This is what's really taking place. Now here's the problem with any kind of socialism. Hitler was a progressive socialist, and how did that end? What you end up with is a totalitarian regime because once progressive socialism has attained its um, critical mass, what's it going to do? And we've really seen that um, in America. Um, the progressive socialists have really come to a critical mass and now they're, um, they, they have to keep the disenfranchised narrative going, you see. It has, to be key, it has to be constantly perpetuated. So by continually to, continuing to perpetuate this narrative, they have to find new things to be disenfranchised with. And that's why we're seeing uh, now it's, all, it's gone down to things like people being offended. Oh, you shouldn't say this. Policing speech, policing thought, and it just goes on and on and on. And what you end up with is a, is a complete totalitarian regime and ideology that becomes so restrictive because it's literally uh, feeding off division in society that we are left, we're left with nothing. We're left with a shell of society. We're left with this mangled version of what a society used to be as progressive socialism continues to erode disenfranchise, erode disenfranchise incrementally, and it never stops. Um, and this is, what I, this is what really scares me about this social ideology or this political ideology is that it will never stop eroding our freedom. It has to keep eroding freedom because that's what propels the whole political movement itself. <coughs> and what we're seeing is um, conservative politics um, at the moment we're seeing Donald Trump and, and Brexit and all these other things. It's people not even really truly understanding what's going on, but inherently knowing something's going on and fighting back against this stuff. So I, ho I hope this video has brought a bit of light, a bit of understanding behind the ideology, the political ideologies that have brought us to this point. But by understanding it in education, we can actually fight against it. So this is Omega. Um, I hope you found this video uh, helpful. Um, I encourage you guys just to be aware of this stuff, um, to keep promoting this stuff on your YouTube channels, to keep um, speaking, against, speaking out against the progressive left, but understand what they're really up to and understand what they're doing because even a lot of progressives, once you explain this to them, they realize that they're actually a part of a, a poisonous ideology that's destroying our society. This is Omega signing out. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, um, please do hit like on the video, share the video around, and let's get the message out there. Thank you very much. See ya.